All right, everybody, we're gonna get candid here. It is April, 2020. We are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and most of us are in quarantine, um, stay at home orders and such, but I have to be honest with you. I have like zero motivation. I have all this time and I have zero motivation to do anything. I am getting school done, barely, but all these extra things I thought I was gonna have time to do, I'm not getting done and I'm not going anywhere. My husband is pretty much doing all the shopping. We've just gotten orders here where we're at that um, he has to wear a mask out. And so um, he's not taking me out. So I'm really at home all the time, but I am not hardly getting anything done. So I wanted to talk in this podcast about that lack of motivation and also the things that I'm doing to overcome that. This is still a process for me, but I have found some things that are really helping me to overcome that lack of motivation because I'm hearing from a lot of other moms that it's not just me. I'm not the only one who seems to be getting nothing done. So I wanna share with you some of the things I've learned, some of the things that are helping, and that's gonna be what this podcast is all about this time. Hello friends, welcome to the Raising Arrows podcast. I'm Amy Roberts from RaisingArrows.net and this is episode number 85, how I'm dealing with my lack of motivation. Now, if you are super motivated, you're not gonna wanna listen to this podcast, but if you're like me and this whole coronavirus has caused you to just not be able to think much about anything else or get anything done, then this podcast is for you. Because frankly, what I'm realizing is that for the first time in my life, I'm actually paying attention to the news. I don't tend to watch the news, listen to the news, read the news. Most of the news I get is via my phone. Um, but I don't pay attention to a lot of it. And honestly, I don't like most of the media outlets. I don't feel like they're giving us a full picture of anything. I always feel like it's very skewed. So I tend not to pay attention to that, but I am paying attention to some of the news that's coming out about the coronavirus. And I'm also paying attention to numbers and there's a town hall meeting three times a week for our local area. And so I watch that to make sure that we're up to date on things. Um, my husband's in the military. And so we have some things that we have to do that other people don't have to do. And so that's something that I need to keep up to date on. So I find myself kind of consumed, if you will, by the information that I'm trying to disseminate for the rest of my family. And that's something I'm not used to doing. I'm not used to having to take outside information about the news and what's going on and then trying to figure out how it affects us because so much of what's going on, my husband is either dealing with that or it just doesn't pertain to us. And so I don't pay attention to a lot of that. I get my news from other ways. I am more consumed by facts and figures and things that I'm reading and keeping up to date in these town hall meetings. And in the process, I find that I am analyzing things. And that's who I am anyway. I'm very thoughtful, introspective. So I take all this information in and I reflect on it and I think about it and I analyze it and I logically put it into orders and I try to make it fit into my life the way it needs to. And that is taking up all my time. I am homeschooling the kids still, but I am very discombobulated for lack of a better word. Um, it, this is Holy Week when I'm recording this and I barely skimmed by to get together some Holy Week resources for the kids. It like totally slipped my mind that it was Holy Week and um, Easter's coming up and I just now, it is Thursday when I'm recording that, I just now made a menu based on the things that I had in my freezer and our whole lives have kind of changed where I'm not just gonna run to the store and go grab the things I'm missing. I have to kind of plan in advance and that's a little difficult at times. And so I think my brain is very busy, but my body is not as busy as it ought to be or as, as I think it ought to be. And we're gonna talk about that fact as well. Like I said, this is 
a very personal podcast for me because it's very much about what I'm dealing with right now and who I am in light of this virus and what's going on because frankly, I'm an introvert. I'm a stay at home person. I enjoy my own backyard. I enjoy my home. I enjoy my own company, frankly, <laughs> which sounds really funny and maybe a little prideful. I don't know, but I could literally sit with my computer and with just my people here and be fine for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks on end. My husband is an extrovert and he needs to get out and he needs to do things. And um, he's so happy when the Amazon truck drives by and he can wave at somebody or the mailman comes and he can say hello because that's a big majority of the interaction he's getting. He is still going into work a few times a week, but there's nobody there. Um, there's they have to be very limited on who is there. So he's he's in there just a few times a week and it's not very interactive at all. So that's been kind of difficult for him. But for me, I'm like, oh, status quo, same old, same old, except I seem to have no motivation to do anything. So that is where I'm at. All that intro to say that these are the things I'm doing that I'm finding to be very helpful for me personally to find some motivation and then to also come to terms with why I'm not motivated and why some of that lack of motivation is actually just fine. So first of all, I remember a friend of mine years ago when I was really struggling told me that sometimes Jesus calls you to a desert to rest. And the place I was living was very hard for me at that time. I was not finding friends. We were having trouble finding a church. I felt dry and dusty and like there were cactus living all over the place and not a single soul in sight. And that was when she said this to me, was sometimes Jesus calls you to a desert for you to rest. And that was what she believed was what I needed. And she was absolutely right. I had been running and gunning for years and I needed to rest. I needed to take a second to just breathe and just be with my family and stop trying to fill my day, my week, my month with all these things. And so I really cut a lot out of my life and I, I had to depend on the Lord for just about everything because I was completely depleted. I was really literally living in a desert and I was depleted and I needed to rest and trust in the Lord. And there's a possibility that COVID-19 is your desert. It may not be, but for many of us, we are finding that we feel very depleted and we feel very you know torn in different directions and confused and i told a friend of mine recently i find myself sometimes just staring at the wall with nothing really going through my head i'm just staring at the wall because there's so much processing in my brain that i'm not really getting anything accomplished and that's because we are depleted we are confused this is a tumultuous time right now and it's difficult and even if our lives haven't changed that much even if we're still staying at home teaching the kids and and cooking and baking and doing all the things that we've always done the world has changed outside of our little home and because of that it is leaking into our house and there are questions that are stirring in your head and this may be the time that God has called you to rest I know I had an incredibly busy March and April planned for this year. I mean, busy, filled to the brim with things to do. I had speaking engagements. I had trips I was taking. I had appointments and all kinds of things. And they all just fell off my calendar like toilet paper falling off the shelves. It was gone. There was nothing left to do. And I almost felt myself sighing with relief. It was like, oh, hey, I can just chill. And yet, I also thought, well, and I can get all these projects done that I was going to do. Well, actually, no, I'm not. What I really needed to do was just to rest. I needed to just have the time to chill. I needed to take that break. And so you may be in this COVID-19 desert right now so that you can actually rest and hear the Lord and focus instead of trying to fill every single minute that you're home now with stuff to do you probably just need to allow yourself that sitting 
and being still and resting. Now, all that said, obviously there are things you're going to have to do and you've got to accomplish a few things because the kids still need to be fed and there's still housework to be done and you can't just ignore all that stuff. So the biggest thing for me, and this has always been what I do, is I make lists and I make just simple lists and things that um, I can just do very quickly. I can mark them off. I can say, okay, these are the three things I need to do today. And when I get done with that, maybe I'll add a few more things on it, but I really try to keep it very minimal, very simple. And I do just a few things every single day. And I often will just make that list first thing in the morning when I am sitting, getting ready for the kids to come in for homeschool or I'm eating my breakfast, I will make this really simple list and that will be the big things I need to accomplish for the morning or then I'll make another one for the afternoon or maybe for the entire day. Those are the things I need to do. For instance, today we were dyeing eggs. I kept forgetting, I had hard boiled the eggs, I kept forgetting to have the kids dye the Easter eggs. And so today I realized it while I was eating breakfast because I saw them in the refrigerator and I was like, I've got to write that down. So I quick put that on a piece of paper and then I thought through some of the other things I've been wanting to do with the kids, but I keep forgetting. And things that were part of our school day that I was forgetting to put into the school day. And that's where your sticky notes and your notepads and things like that were readily available where you can see them. That's where those are crucial to getting motivated and doing some of the things you keep forgetting to do. So for me today, it was dyeing Easter eggs. Those of you watching this on YouTube, you can see I've got like red dye on my hands. And um, that was just part of the fun. We had a blast dyeing these Easter eggs but it was something I kept forgetting to do. And I had a lot of those kinds of things and I just kind of wrote those out on a list. And even if you just need to brain dump all the stuff or keep a notebook near your bed where you just dump all the things that you keep forgetting to do and suddenly it comes to your mind and you're like, oh, I need to write that down get it written down and then you can put it into a to-do list for the next day where you choose just a few things from that list. Don't get overzealous though and try to do them all. Just choose a few things and then be reasonable with what actually can be done. If you recognize, like today I was gonna bake bread and then I realized, no, I'm not gonna bake bread. <laughs> That's not gonna work. I don't have time to bake bread today. I can do that later on in the week. It didn't need to happen today. So be flexible, be reasonable but make those lists. Those lists are going to help you to accomplish something. They're going to keep you motivated. Another thing I've been doing is joining specific challenges for things that I really wanna be working on. Now I have a caution here for you. You could join challenges to declutter your home, lose weight, exercise more, um, do pantry stocking, and on and on and on and on. You could join all these great challenges because they're all out there right now, aren't they? but you can't do all those. There is no way. In fact, I'm proof positive because I signed myself up for about five challenges. I can't do it. There's no way. One of them was like a canning challenge and a bread baking challenge and a trim healthy mama challenge. And I mean, it was crazy. And I'm looking at it now going, what was I thinking? Well, learn from me. Don't sign up for all those challenges. Choose one challenge to focus on. If you really feel like, hey, this is where I need the support. And for me, that was Trim Healthy Mama. I'm trying to get back into that um, just to help my health and well-being. And so I decided I would join a Trim Healthy Mama group a challenge group and that's been super beneficial but I've had to tell the other groups you know personally in my head tell the other groups that I cannot do this right now so there are going to be some things you need to step away from but if you're finding that you really want to focus on something with yourself or with your home right now and you need the motivation and the accountability, go ahead and join a challenge. Just recognize that you don't want it to actually be a time suck and a detriment to your life right now. I also had to realize something about myself and this came in a very roundabout way. I was listening to a seminar about something else and the person was talking about people who have to think first before they do something and how they have to mull over what they're going to do. They have to concentrate and really come up with the steps and the methodology and then they can act. And then there are people on the opposite end 
who have to get up, get moving, start doing something, and then they can think through all the things that they need to do. And I realized that's who I am. I am the get up, go, move, do something, act first, move first, think later. And then there's going to be some of you who are the think first, move later. You have to figure out who you are and how you work best. Are you the kind of person who needs to set out a group of plans and get it all lined out, otherwise you're going to stand in the kitchen staring at the wall? Or are you the kind of person who needs to just get in the kitchen and open a can of something and then it's all going to start flooding into your mind? So it sounds kind of funny that I like lists and yet I'm an act first kind of person. But that's what motivates me. It motivates me to get up. I actually typically make my list while standing up because it, it gets my brain engaged. And so if you think about which person you are, are you the person who needs to sit down and write out all the steps and think through, I'm gonna do this and then this and then this, or are you a person who needs to just get up and get to the room where you're supposed to be working, or think about what you're going to actually be accomplishing as you are walking toward that thing. I'm going to be making supper. I'm just going to get into the kitchen. And when I get into the kitchen, then I can think through everything I need to do. So that was very enlightening for me to realize I need to move first, think later. I'm not a think first, move later, but you may be. So th think about that and consider which one you are. And then finally, we just need to recognize in this very bizarre, difficult season that jobs have changed, circumstances have changed, and even though you may be doing exactly the same thing you were doing before, you have the same job technically that you had before, you're still homeschooling the kids, you're still cooking dinner, you're still cleaning the house, you have the same job. The circumstances behind that job and the dynamics of that job have changed. And so this is a season of transition. This is a season where it's not really normal. And we've talked before about when seasons are not normal, when your schedule cannot be normal, you have to make kind of an abnormal schedule. You have to recognize that things are different and things are not quite falling into the same place they used to be. And that's okay, but in order to have some motivation to do the things you need to do, there has to be an abnormal schedule. There has to be some way that you order your day that leaves lots and lots of wiggle room in it. I used to call it well-ordered wiggle room. It just gives you a lot of margin because so many things are changing. So you might need to pare down your homeschool schedule. You might need to pare down your cleaning schedule. You might need to tell yourself that that stuff you thought needed to be decluttered right now actually does not need to be decluttered right now. You don't need to have all those sewing projects. Now I know for me, I'm actually back to sewing some because several members of my family needed face masks. My husband needed a face mask, mask to even go to the store and my daughter who works at a drive through coffee shop has to have a face mask and I made one for myself. So I'm actually busy doing some extra things I didn't do before and so that means some other things have to give. I can't have all the things on my plate and expect to do them all well. And with circumstances changing and our brains now working on overtime a lot of times, we do have more to do. Some of it is more intellectual, some of it's more thinking through things, but we still have to recognize that that has changed in our lives. There's, there's a lot of change going on. And so we have to change how we see our daily activities and not see this so much as a lack of motivation, but more as a time for rest, a time to slow down and a time to really prioritize and do the things that need to be done but not try to add in a lot of extra things. So that is how I personally am dealing with my lack of motivation. I'm recognizing it's not totally a lack of motivation. It's just a different life right now. Friends, now is the time for that relaxed homeschooling and that realistic homemaking and that refreshed mothering that Raising Arrows is all about. I thank you so much for joining me this week.